I hope I'm getting this right. I seem to remember Francis Crick wrote about he came to believe in this kind of hypothesis of panspermia that um, yes. that that life may have come from space, which is it's it's strange because so in your in your book Rational Mysticism you interviewed Terence McKenna, um, who also had the same idea that that mushroom spores because they can survive in uh, kind of sub-zero temperature that they can su they can survive va the vacuum of space and maybe mushrooms are these super intelligent kind of aliens that come <laughs> planet to planet and you know make monkeys uh conscious in in uh you know bring them to this kind of level of consciousness that humans have was the, was the thinking um and it's funny that uh, when i first saw the the francis crick had advocated this you know people like graham hancock are the other kind of people who talk about the idea of the ancient aliens and um and people like Terence McKenna and Graham Hancock are seen as very fringy by the mainstream, right? And yet then you have this Nobel Prize winning scientist basically saying the same thing. Um, yeah, it's very strange. Yeah, when you, get to the, uh, when you get to the borders of knowledge, there's some really strange stuff that happens. I'm, I'm glad you brought up uh, Terence McKenna because he brought out, I had sort of a, I, I was very ambivalent uh, uh, toward him Terence McKenna was this kind of like uh, new generation Timothy Leary figure, except I think he was actually more coherent and intelligent than Timothy Leary. McKenna had was like a psychedelic adventurer and philosopher. He'd have these wild trips and try to make sense of it all. And, um, and he, he liked to say very provocative things. He had this prediction that the world was going to end or change dramatically in 2012, I think it was. And I, I actually interviewed him and in, I think it was the year 2000, it was before 9-11 anyway. And he ended up dying of a, of a brain tumor shortly after I interviewed him. But he was, he was like a provocateur. He was, you know, there's this, this uh, term in, uh, in psychedelic culture called just goofing on somebody, meaning telling them tall tales giving them a bunch of bullshit so that they go, oh my God. And it's all kind of a joke. And so McKenna was like a master of goofing. And he would just say preposterous things. And I, when I interviewed him, I challenged him on this because I knew that a lot of his, his followers, he had avid fans, they believed all the stuff he was saying. And so I said, come on, I, you don't really take this seriously yourself, do you? I was talking about the, the 2012 prophecy and some other crazy shit. And he said, um, he said, no, man, you know, sort of reluctantly, he finally, he finally said, no. He said, I'm just trying to get people to see how weird the world is. And, you know, that the, the conventional philosophy and science and religion don't do justice to the profound weirdness of the world. So the kind of, rational, stuffy, scientific American part of my brain was disapproving of Terence McKenna. But the acid head in me was like, yeah, man, you've got it. You, this is, that's the way to talk about the weirdness, to just spin tall tales and do it ironically so that everybody knows that no matter how tall your tale is, it doesn't really do justice to the weirdness of the world. 